कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे we continue reading with pastimes of prithu maharaj um canto 4 of shrimad bhagavatam chapter 22 would somebody like to read maybe ratna you can read today if not then i'll read Prithu chapter twenty two. Sorry. Huh? Prithu Maharaj's meeting with the four Kumaras. Text one. The great sage Maitreya said, while the citizens were thus praying to the most powerful king Prithu, the four Kumaras who were as bright as the sun arrived on the spot. Text two. Seeing the glowing effulgence of the four Kumaras, the masters of all mystic power, the king and his associates could recognize them as they descended from the sky. Text three. Seeing the four Kumaras, Prithu Maharaj was greatly anxious to receive them. Therefore, the king, with all his officers, were hastily. Very hastily got up, as anxiously as a conditioned soul whose senses are immediately attracted by the modes of material nature. Text four. When the great sages accepted their reception according to the instructions of the shastras and finally took their seats offered by the king, the king, influenced by the glories of the sages, immediately bowed down. Thus, he worshipped the four Kumaras. Text five. After the king took the water which had washed the lotus feet of the Kumaras and sprinkled it over his hair. By such respectful actions, the king, as an exemplary personality, showed how to receive a spiritually advanced personality. Text six. Text the four. Its sages were elder to Lord Shiva, and when they were seated on the golden throne, they appeared just like fire blazing on an altar. Maharaj Prithu, out of his great gentleness and respect for them, began to speak with great restraint as follows. Text seven. King Prithu spoke, "My dear great sages, auspiciousness personified." It is very difficult for even the mystic yogis to see you. Indeed, you are very rarely seen. I do not know what kind of pious activity I perform for you to grace me by appearing before me without difficulty. Text eight. Any person upon whom the brahmanas and vaishnavas. A please can achieve anything which is very rare to obtain in this world, as well as after death. Not only that, but one also receives the favor of the auspicious Lord Shiva and Lord Vishnu, who accompany the Brahmanas and Vaishnavas. Text nineteen. Prithu Maharaj continued, although you are traveling in all planetary systems. People cannot know you, just as they cannot know the super soul, although he is within everyone's heart as the witness of everything. Even Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva cannot understand the super soul. Text ten: A person who is not very rich and is attached to family life becomes highly glorified when saintly persons are present in his home. The master and the servants who are engaged in offering the exalted visitors water, a sitting place, and paraphernalia for reception are glorified, and the home itself is also. Text eleven. On the contrary, even though full of all opulence and material prosperity, any householders. 
house where the devotees of the Lord are never allowed to come in and where there is no water for washing their feet is to be considered a tree in which all venomous servants live. Text 12. Maharaj Prithu offered his welcome to the four Kumaras, addressing them as the best of the Brahmanas. He welcomed them, saying, From the beginning of your birth, you strictly observe the vows of celibacy, and although you are experienced in the path of liberation, you are keeping yourself just yourself. like small Text 13. Prithu Maharaj inquired from the sages about persons entangled in this dangerous material existence because of their previous actions. Could such persons whose only aim is sense gratification be blessed with any good fortune? Text 14. Prithu Maharaj continued, My dear sirs, there is no need to ask about your good and bad fortune because you are always absorbed in spiritual bliss. The mental concoction of the auspicious and inauspicious does not exist in you. Text 15. I am completely assured that personalities like you are the only friends for persons who are blazing in the fire of material existence. I therefore ask you how in this material world we can very soon achieve the ultimate goal of life. Text 16. The Supreme Personality of Godhead is always anxious to elevate the living entities who are his parts and parcels. And for their special benefit, the Lord travels all over the world in the form of self-realized persons like you. Text 17. The great sage Maitreya continued, Thus, Sanat Kumar, the best of the celibates, celibates, after hearing the speech of Prithu Maharaj, which was meaningful, appropriate, full of precise words, and very sweet to hear, smiled with full satisfaction and began to speak as follows. Text 18. Sanat Kumar said, My dear King Prithu, I am very nicely questioned by you. Such questions are beneficial for all living entities, especially because they are raised by you, who are always thinking of the good of others. Although you know everything, you ask such questions because that is the behavior of saintly persons. Such intelligence is befitting your position. 19. When there is a congregation, of devotees, their discussions, questions, and answers become conclusive to both the speaker and the audience. Thus, such a meeting is beneficial for everyone's real happiness. Text 20. Sanat Kumar continued. My dear King, you already have an inclination to glorify the lotus feet of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Such attention is very difficult to achieve, but when one has attained such unflinching faith in the Lord, it is automatically, automatically cleanses lusty desires from the core of the heart. Text 21. It has been conclusively decided in the scriptures after due consideration that the ultimate goal for the welfare of human society is detachment from the bodily concept of life with increased and steadfast attachment for the Supreme Lord, who is transcendental beyond the modes of material nature. Text 22. Attachment for the Supreme can be increased by practicing devotional service, inquiring about the Supreme Personality of Godhead, applying Bhakti Yoga in life, worshipping the Yogeshwar, yeah. Yogeshwara, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and by hearing and chanting about the glories of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. These actions are pious in themselves. Text 23. One has to make progress in spiritual life 
by not associating with persons who are simply interested in sense gratification and making money. Not only such persons, but one who associates with such persons should be avoided. One should mold his life in such a way that he cannot live in peace without drinking the nectar of the glorification of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Hari. One, has, one can be thus elevated by being disgusted with the things of for sense enjoyment. Text 24. A candidate for spiritual advancement must be non-violent, must follow in the footsteps of great acharyas, must always remember the nectar of the pastimes of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, must follow the regulative principles without material desire, and while following the regulative principles, should not blaspheme others. A devotee should lead a very simple life and not be disturbed by the duality of opposing elements. He should learn to tolerate them. Okay. Text 25. The devotee should gradually increase the culture of devotional service by constant hearing of the transcendental qualities of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. These pastimes are like ornamental decorations on the ears of devotees by rendering devotional service and transcending the material qualities one can easily be fixed in transcendence in supreme personnel of god text 26 upon becoming fixed in his attachment to the supreme personality of godhead by the grace of the spiritual master and by awakening knowledge and detachment, the living entity situated within the heart of the body and covered by the five elements burns up his material surroundings exactly as fire arising from wood burns the, the wood itself. Text 27. When a person becomes devoid of all material desires and liberated from all material qualities, he transcends distinctions between actions executed externally and internally. At that time, the difference between the soul and the super soul, which was existing before self-realization, is annihilated. Is annihilated. When a dream is over, there is no longer a distinction between the dream and the dreamer. Text 28. 28. When the soul exists for sense gratification, he creates different desires. And for that reason, he becomes subjected to designations. But when one is in the transcendental position, he is no longer interested in anything except fulfilling the desires of the Lord. Text 29. Only because of different causes does a person see a difference between himself and others. Just as one sees the reflection of a body appearing differently and manifested on water, on oil, or in a mirror. Text 30. When one's mind and senses are attracted to sense objects for enjoyment, the mind becomes agitated. As a result of continually thinking of sense objects, one's real consciousness almost becomes lost, like the water in a lake that is gradually sucked up by the big grass straws on its bank. Text 31. One deviates from the original consciousness, he loses the capacity to remember his previous position or recognize his present one. When remembrance is lost, all knowledge acquired is based on a false foundation. When this occurs, learned scholars consider that the soul is lost. Text 32. 
there is no stronger obstruction to one's self interest than thinking other subject matters to be more pleasing than one's self realization text study 3 for humans society constantly thinking of how to earn money and apply it for sense gratification brings about the destruction of everyone's interests when one becomes devoid of knowledge and devotional service he enters into species of life like those of trees and stones and stones text study 4 those who strongly desire to cross the ocean of nations must not associate with the modes of ignorance for hedonistic activities are the greatest obstructions to realization of religious principles economic development regulated sense gratification and at last liberation text study 5 out of the four principles namely religion economic development sense gratification and liberation liberation has to be taken very seriously the other three are subject to destruction by the stringent law of nature death text study 6 we accept as blessings different states of higher life distinguishing them from lower states of life but we should know that such distinctions exist only in relation to the interchange of the modes of material nature actually these states of life have no permanent existence for all of them will be destroyed by the supreme controller text study 7 sanat kumar advised the king therefore my dear king prithu try to understand the supreme personality of godhead who is living within everyone's heart along with the individual soul in each and every body either moving or not moving the individual souls are fully covered by the gross material body and subtle body made of the life air and intelligence text study 8 the supreme personality of god hen manifests himself as one with the cause and effect within this body but one who has transcended the illusory energy by deliberate deliberate consideration which clears the misconcept misconception of a snake for a rope can understand that the parmatma is eternally transcendental to the material creation and situated in pure eternal energy thus the lord is transcendental to all material determination and to him one must only must one surrender next 39 the devotees who are always engaged in the service of the toes of the lotus feet of the lord can very easily overcome hard not its desires for fruitive activities because this is very difficult the non devotees the gyanis and yogis although trying to stop the waves of sense gratification cannot do so therefore you are advised to engage in the devotional service of krishna the son of vasudev text 40 the ocean of nations is very difficult to cross because it is infested with many dangerous sharks although those who are non devotees undergo severe austerities and penances to cross that ocean we recommend that you simply take shelter of the lotus feet of the lord which are like boats for crossing the ocean although the ocean is difficult to cross by taking shelter of his lotus feet you will overcome all dangers text 41 the great sage maitreya continued being thus enlightened in complete spiritual knowledge by the son of brahma 
one of the kumaras who was complete in spiritual knowledge the king worshiped them in the following words text 42 the king said o brahmana o powerful one formerly lord vishnu showed me his costless vaxi indicating that you would come to my house and to confirm that blessing you have all come text 43 my dear brahmana you have carried out the order thoroughly because you are also as compassionate as the lord it is my duty therefore to offer you something but all i possess are but remnants of food taken by great saintly persons what shall i give text 44 the king continued therefore my dear brahmanas my life wife children home furniture and household paraphernalia my kingdom strength land and especially my treasury are all offered unto you text 45 since only a person who is completely educated according to the principles of vedic knowledge deserves to be commander in chief ruler of the state the first to chastise or the proprietor of the whole planet prithu maharaj offered everything to the kumaras text 46 the kshatriyas vaishyas and shudras eat their food by virtue of the brahmana's mercy it is the brahmanas who enjoy their own property clothe clothe themselves with their own property and give charity with their own property text 47 prithu maharaj continued how can such persons who have rendered unlimited service by explaining the path of self realization in relation to the supreme personality of godhead and whose explanations are given for our enlightenment with complete conviction and vedic evidence be repaid except by folded palms containing water for their satisfaction such great personalities can be satisfied only by their own activities which are distributed amongst human society out of their unlimited mercy text 48 the great sage maitreya continued being thus worshiped by maharaj prithu the four kumaras who were masters of devotional service became very pleased indeed they appeared in the sky and praised the character of the king and everyone observed them text 49 amongst great personalities maharaj prithu was the chief by virtue of his fixed position in relation to spiritual enlightenment he remains satisfied as one who has achieved all success in spiritual understanding text 50 being self satisfied maharaj prithu executed his duties as perfectly as possible according to the time and his situation strength and financial position his only aim in all his activities was to satisfy the absolute truth in this way he duly acted text 51 maharaj to completely dedicated himself to be an eternal servant of the supreme personality of godhead transcendental to material nature consequently all the fruits of his activities were dedicated to the lord and he always thought of himself as the servant of the supreme personality, the supreme personality of personality who is the proprietor of everything text 52 maharaj prithu who was very opulent due to the prosperity of his entire empire remained at home as a householder since he was never inclined to utilize his opulences for the gratification of his senses he remained unattached 
exactly like the sun, which is unaffected in all circumstances. Text 53, being situated in the liberated position of devotional service, Prithu Maharaj not only performed all fruitive activities, but also begot five sons by his wife, Archi. Indeed, all his sons were begotten according to his own desire. Text 54. After begetting five sons named Vijitaswa, Dhum, Rakshkesha, Haryaksha, Dravina, and Vraka, Prithu Maharaj continued to rule the planet. He accepted all the qualities of the deities who governed all other planets. Text 55. Since Maharaj Prithu was a perfect duty of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he wanted to protect the Lord's creation by pleasing the various citizens according to the various desires. Therefore, Prithu Maharaj used to please them in all respects by his works, mentality, works, and gentle behavior. Text 56. Maharaj Prithu became as celebrated a king as Somaraj. Somaraj, the king of the moon. He was also powerful and exalted. Exacting. exacting just like the sun god who distributes heat and light and at the same time exacts as a planet and planetary waters text 57 maharaj prithu was so strong and powerful that no one could disobey his orders any more than one could conquer fire itself he was so strong that he was compared to Indra, the king of heaven, whose power is insupportable. On the other hand, Maharaj Prithu was also as tolerant as the earth and in fulfilling various desires of human society, he was like heaven itself. Like Text 57. 57. Uh, 58. Just as rain falls satisfies everyone's desires, Maharaj Prithu used to satisfy everyone. He was like the sea in that no one could understand his depths and he was like Meru, the king of hills, in the fixity of his purpose. Text 59. Maharaj Prithu's intelligence and education were exactly like that of Yamaraj, the superintendent of death. His opulence was comparable to the Himalaya mountains where all valuable jewels and metals are stocked. He possessed great riches like Kuvera, the treasure, treasurer of the heavenly planets, and no one could reveal his secrets, for they were like the demigod Varunas. Text 60. In his bodily strength and in the strength of his senses, Maharaj Prithu was as strong as the wind, which can go anywhere and everywhere. As far as his intolerance was concerned, he was just like the all-powerful Rudra expansion of Lord Shiva or Sadashiv. Text 61. In his bodily beauty, he was just like Cupid, and in his thoughtfulness, he was like a lion. In his affection, he was just like Swayambhuva Manu, and in his ability to control, he was like Lord Brahma. Text 62. In his personal behavior, Prithu Maharaj exhibited all good qualities, and in spiritual knowledge, he was exactly like Braspati. In self-control, he was like the Supreme Personality of Godhead himself. As far as his devotional service was concerned, he was a great follower of devotees who were attached to cow protection and the rendering of all services, all service to the spiritual master and the brahmanas. He was perfect in his 
shyness and in his gentle behavior. And when he engaged in some philanthropic activity, he worked as if he were working for his own personal self. Text 63. Throughout the whole universe, in the higher, lower, and middle planetary systems, Prithu Maharaj's reputation was loudly declared, and all ladies and saintly persons heard his glories, which were as sweet as the glories of Lord Ramachandra. Jai. Jai. Thank you so much. Prithu Maharaj ke, Shla Prabhupada ke, Gaurav Jai. Jai. Hare Krishna, thank you.